Hello everyone, in today's video we'll be learning how to make an image carousel. This is an amazing project for beginners because we'll be going through the HTML, CSS and JavaScript of how this component works and it's a pretty simple component. So if we look at the demo over here, we can see that we can click on the buttons over here on the right to change the slide and then we can click on the left button to go to the previous slide as well and then at the bottom we have indicators showing the current slide and we can also click on them to choose the active slide that we want. So without much further ado, let's get started with coding this component. So you'll want to open up your IDE wherever you want to create the project and then you'll have to open the terminal in your IDE. And then to get started, we'll write down npm create wheat at latest to start our project. And then it'll ask us for the name of our project. So we'll just go ahead and write down react-image-carousel. We'll select react in this list and we'll select JavaScript and it'll give us some commands we can run to get started. So we'll cd into our project and then we will run npm install to install all the dependencies. Once that's done, we have another dependency to install for our icons. So we'll write down npm install react-icons. Once that's done, we can start our project by writing down npm run dev. Now our website will be run at the local host 5173. And we can see that a basic boilerplate website has been started for us. Now, if we look at the files and folders generated, we'll see that there's a lot of stuff which we don't actually need. So we can go down into index.css to begin with, and we can begin by removing all of the default styling given over here. So we'll just select everything and just delete it. Once we save that, we can go into app.jsx and we can also remove this use state over here and everything between these app divs. And we can just write hello world as a replacement. So we'll remove the use state over here, remove the logo that we're importing, and we'll remove the use state import over here as well. We'll go ahead and save that and we can see the hello world on the right. We'll delete this public folder over here as well as this assets folder. We'll go into app.css and remove all the styling here as well. Lastly, we'll go into index.html and change the title of the site. And we'll just name it something like React Image Carousel. And we'll go ahead and save that. Lastly, in index.css, we'll add some styling which applies to every element in our page. So we'll do that by writing down asterisk. And then we want the box sizing for every element to be border box. We want the default margin for every element to be zero. And we want the default padding as well to be zero for every element. Next, we'll just add some default um, font family. So for that, we'll want it to default to Arial if it doesn't have that Helvetica. And then as a default, we'll write sans serif. And then we can see that hello world is printed on the right with the correct font family. Now to make our carousel component, we'll actually need some data such as the URLs for the images as well as the titles for the alt tags. So we'll go into the SRC folder and create a new folder where we will save the data. And then we'll create a JSON file called carousel data.json. In that, we'll start by creating an object. And to it, we'll add a field called slides, which will be an array of objects. So the first object will have a parameter called SRC. We'll leave it empty for now, as well as a parameter called alt, which will be empty as well. This will serve as the alt tag for our image component. Now for this, we'll be using a service called lorem pixum, which basically allows us to use their service um, by providing us with URLs for images and we can specify the width and the height of the images. So we'll specifically be using this type of URL where we can specify a seed which we want to provide and based on that it will always give us the same image. So let's go ahead and we will copy this URL over here. 
and then we'll go ahead and paste this into the src field over here and for the seed we can provide anything we'll just write down img1 we'll give it a width of 600 pixels and a height of 400 pixels you can choose anything you want and then for the alt tag we'll just write down image1 for carousel and then we'll just go ahead and copy this a few more times and paste it so we'll have three images so for the second image it will be image 2 and for the third image it should be image 3 and it will say image 2 for carousel and image 3 for carousel we'll go ahead and save that so now that we're done with making the data we'll actually want to go and work on the component itself so in the src folder we'll create a new folder and we will name it components in there the first file that we want to make is for our component so we'll name it carousel.jsx make sure you name it jsx and not just js for wheat to work properly we'll also make another file for the css and we'll just name it carousel.css then we'll go back into our jsx file and i have an extension which just lets me write down rafc and creates the boilerplate for the uh, functional component We'll go ahead and save that and we will also import the CSS file over here by writing down dot import dot slash carousel dot CSS. And we also fix this error in the JSON file, which uh, seems to be missing a comma over here. So now that we made the initial component, we'll go ahead and import it into our app.jsx file. So let's go into app.jsx and then remove this hello world over here. And then we'll go between these divs and we will add our component by opening the bracket and writing down carousel and then closing that off. And then once we save it, we can see that carousel is printed out onto our UI. Now we actually want to obtain the data in our JSON file and pass it down into the carousel component. Um, so we'll come to the top of the app.jsx file and import the JSON file. So we'll say import slides from dot slash data slash carousel data.json and we're importing slides because if you remember inside our json slides is the first parameter in our object so we'll just come down here into carousel and we will pass it in as a prop so we'll name the da uh, prop data and for that we'll pass in the slides variable that we have now we can go into the carousel.jsx and we just have to take in um, that data prop um, in our props list so we'll come to the bracket over here and just write down curly braces data. And to begin with, let's just log it out. So we'll go down here before the return statement and write down console.log data. And then if we come back to our browser and open the console, we can see that the array has been printed out. It's got three elements and we can see that the correct objects are inside each element at each index. So now that we can log the data properly and we see that it's present, we can go back to our carousel.jsx file and remove the console.log. And now what we want to do is we want to show the data on the UI. And to do that, we'll begin by removing this carousel text. We'll add the curly braces so we can add some code inside our HTML. And we'll map through the data. And at each index, we'll take the item present at that index as well as the index that we are at. And for each item, we will return an image. The images SRC will be equal to item.src. And the alt value will be equal to item.alt. And then for the key, we'll just pass in the current index. We'll go ahead and save that. And now you can see three images are rendered out onto our UI, which have been fetched from the Lorem Pixum uh, service. So now that we have the images being rendered out, we want to add some styling. So we'll uh, add a class name to the div and name it carousel. And then for each of our images, we'll give them a class name of slide. Now that we've added the class names, we'll go into carousel.css and add the styles itself. So we'll begin by writing dot carousel and adding the styles for that. We want it to display flex. We want the justify content to be center. We want the align items to be center as well. 
and then we want the width to be 600 pixels and height to be 400 pixels. This is what we had specified to the lorem pixum API as well. And now we can see everything is in a row. And then we'll add the styling for each slide as well. So for each slide, we wanted to have a border radius of 0 0.5 rem. And then we also wanted to have a box shadow of zero pixels horizontally and vertically, but seven pixels of blur and a value of hash 666. We wanted to have a width of 100% of its parent and a height of 100% of its parent as well. We'll go ahead and save that and you can see that the styles have been applied to the images as well. Now that the slides are working, we'll import our arrows and indicators. So we'll write down at the top of the carousel.jsx file import bs arrow left circle fill and bs arrow right circle fill and we'll import this from the react images library so we'll write down from react dash images slash bs then we'll go to the top of our component return statement and below the div we'll write down bs arrow left circle fill and then at the bottom of the div we'll write down bs arrow right circle fill and we'll go ahead and save that and you can see that it's not actually being rendered out onto the UI right now. So even if we refresh, it's not visible. And that's because we need to add some stylings for it to be on the top of the component and be visible to the user. But before we do that, we also want to add the indicators that are at the bottom of the component. So we'll go below the right arrow and we'll create a span which will contain the indicators. And then within the span, we'll have to do something similar to the top where we'll map our data and for each element, we'll take the item. And since we're not using it, we'll just set it as underscore. We'll take the index, which we are at. And for each of those, we will return a button. And let's just add the parameters of the button. So we'll have the key as the index that we are at. And for the on click value, we just want to set that as null for right now. And we can fill that in later. So we'll go ahead and save that. And you can see that the buttons aren't visible as well. So we really need to add the styling for this. So be we'll begin by adding the class names for each of these components, which we've added, and then we can write the styles. So for the left arrow, we'll add a class name and we'll set that to arrow. And we also want to add a class name of arrow dash left. And similarly for the right arrow, we'll add a class name of arrow as well as arrow dash right. And then for the span which we have here, we want to add a class name of indicators. And for each button within the indicator span, we want to add a class name of indicator. So we have class names for everything. Now we can go into the CSS file and add the styling. So firstly, for the carousel, we wanted to have a position of relative. This is so that everything else can be positioned absolutely with the context of the carousel. So we'll write down dot arrow and we'll position it absolutely. We'll write down position absolute. And now you can see that the arrow is being rendered. Then we want to make it of a width of two rem, a height of two rem as well. We want to give it a color of white and it's a lot easier to see now. Both of the arrows are overlapping each other right now, but we'll fix that later. Coming back to the CSS, we want to add a specific styling for arrow dash left. And we'll just give it a left value of one rem. This positions it one rem away from the left of its parent component. And similarly for the arrow dash right, we'll give it a right of one rem. And now we can see that our arrows are positioned as they should be in the final component. Now it'll be good for the cursor to be of a pointer once we hover over the arrows. So we'll just say dot arrow hover. And then for that, we want to just set the cursor to be a pointer. Now if we save that and we go back to our component, once we hover over the arrow, it's a pointer. Lastly, we want to add a shadow to the arrows on the left and right, but we can't just use the box shadow property and you'll see in a second why and we'll have to use filters. So let's just add the box shadow property and we'll give it a value of 0, 0, 10 and just make it black and we'll save that. 
and then once we click on refresh you'll see that the shadow is actually a square and not a circle so instead of using the box shadow property we'll have to use something else which is the filter property so we'll write down filter and the filter will be a drop shadow and into that we'll pass in 0 pixels, 0 pixels, 5 pixels and a value of hash 555 if we save that and refresh you'll see that the shadow is actually a circle as it should be and then lastly we will have the uh, classes for the indicators so we'll write on dot indicators we want it to be a display flex we want the position to be absolute with respect to its parent and we want it to be placed on the bottom one rem away from the bottom of the parent And then we'll add the details for the indicator class. So we want it to have a background color of white. We want it to have a height of 0.5 rem and a width of 0.5 rem as well. And then we want it to have a border radius of 100% so it's circular. We want the border to be none. And we also want to remove the outline property so we'll set outline none and then we'll go ahead and save that and then lastly we want to add a box shadow of 0 pixels horizontally and vertically and a blur of 5 pixels and a value of hash 555 and we also want them to be spaced out a bit so we'll say margin 0 vertically and 0 0.2 rem horizontally and we can see that they're spaced out and look as they should and then lastly we want the cursor to be a pointer as well once we are hovering over the indicator component and now we can see that everything looks as it should so now that we're done with the styling of each of these components we actually want to add the functionality where we can change the slides once we click on the arrow or the indicators so we will go into carousel.jsx and we want a variable which controls the current slide which we're on so we'll import the use state hook from react and then we'll come to the top of the component and say const slide which will be the variable and set slide which will be used to set the state and then we'll say use state and give it an initial value of zero so we start on the zero with slide now to only show the slide which is at the current index we'll remove the class name over here of slide and instead we'll add conditional class names so we'll check if the slide variable is the same as the current index of this image we'll pass it a class name of slide otherwise we'll pass it a class name of, sl of slide as well as slide dash in now we have to go back into carousel.css and write down the sty style for slide dash hidden so we'll say dot slide dash hidden and for that we just want it to have a display of none once we save that, we can see that only the image at the current slide position, which is zero, is shown to the user. Now, we also want the indicators to show which slide we're currently on. So let's add the functionality for that. So we'll go back into carousel.jsx. Instead of having a class name of indicator, we'll have also a conditional class name and we'll check if the slide is at the current index. If it is, we'll just pass in a class name of indicator otherwise we'll pass an indicator as well as indicator dash inactive now let's go ahead and add the styling for this class in carousel.css so at the bottom we'll write down dot indicator dash inactive and for this we just want to set the background color equal to gray and if we save that you can see that every indicator has been grayed out except for the current one now that we have a way of indicating which slide we're on, we want to be able to control the slide we're on using the indicators and arrows. So we'll go back and add two functions, const next slide, as well as const previous slide. Now what we want this function to do is take the current slide value, add one to it, and then call the set slide function using that variable. So we'll just state set slide and slide plus one. And similarly for the previous slide function, we'll just write down set slide 
slide minus one. And then we'll go ahead and save that. Now we want it to be called when we click on the arrows. So we'll go to the left arrow and say the on click function should call previous slide. And on the right arrow, the on click function should call next slide. Now we'll go ahead and try this and we will get an error. I want you to predict what the error will be before we get it. Um, and then we can work on fixing it later once we encounter it. So we go to the right to our component. And once we click on the arrows, everything works properly. But on the last turn, it just shows a blank page. And that's because the slide variable, it has gone from two to three, while we only have three elements. So it's pointing to an index which doesn't exist. And since no image matches the condition where we're checking slide equal to index, it's not printing out any image at all. So to fix this, we want to set this variable conditionally. So instead of just setting this variable like it is, we'll first check if slide is equal to data dot length minus one, which is the last index, we'll wrap it around to the first index, which is zero. So we'll wrap it around to the first slide. Otherwise we'll proceed as is. Similarly for the previous slide function, we'll check if the slide variable is equal to zero. If it is, we'll wrap around to the last image. Otherwise, we'll just subtract one as it is. And then if we save that and refresh and try again, it works as required. And then after the last image, it wraps around to the first image. And before the first image, it wraps around to the last image and it works as we expect it to. So now that that's done, we also expect to click on the indicators and go to the correct slide. So let's add the functionality for that. And it's pretty simple. So instead of having an on click value of equal to null, we'll just say an anonymous function, arrow function, which calls set slide and sets it to the index of the button which has been clicked. And then if we save that and refresh, we, the arrows work as they did previously, but clicking on the indicators also changes the slide that we're currently on. So that's it for the component. We, we should just center it to the middle of the page for presentation. So for that, we just go into app.css and we'll add a styling for the dot app uh, class name. So we'll come to the top, top and write on dot app. We want it to have a height of 100% of the viewport height, so 100 VH. We want it to display flex. We want the flex direction to be column. We want it to justify content to center. And we also want it to align, uh, align items to center as well. And that presents the component as it should be in the middle of the page. And that's about it for the component. We can click on the arrows to change the current slide that we're on. And then we see the indicators and we can also click on them to change the slide that is being shown. So that's about it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it. If you did, do like, share and subscribe. And if you have any other ideas for tutorials, please do comment it down below.